Welcome to my latest review of the For Britain 2020 manifesto. Now I'm going to be making my way through the manifesto at a rate of about two a week. Uh, so share these, share these videos. I'll be producing a video, blog and audio of every aspect of the manifesto. Uh, Forbritain.uk slash manifesto. So please do share these. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at the NHS. And as anyone who lives in the UK and preferably not under a rock will know that the NHS is one of the primary political subjects in this country and is always at the forefront of campaigning come every single general election. Now, I am supportive of the NHS. I worked in the NHS for some years. And I know there's something of a disagreement uh, among uh, people generally, actually, but particularly on our side of politics, about the state provision of health care. A lot of people not uh, over the moon about it. For myself, I think it's very smart. I think if there's any tax I don't mind paying, it's one that will ensure I have health care free when I need it uh, and that I don't have that extra burden on me which the poorest people in society had prior to the uh, creation of the National Health Service. I think it's quite uh, smart to pay into a public fund and have all your, your health care available when you need it. It's a good idea uh, and I don't really see it as, you know, I'm, I'm pro free market, of course I am, but I think on this, for some things we already make exceptions. For example, the police is, are funded by the state. Um, the social services funded by the state, ambulance services, fire services. And I guess I see healthcare in the same way. Uh, I think it's, as I say, and, I, and I, I'm happy to pay tax for my healthcare to be covered, and I'm sure many people are. There's also a moral uh, aspect to this. Do I think we should leave the poorest people uh, to uh, be ill and, and die? Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. So I've supported the health service all my adult life. But do I support it in its current form and the trajectory and the journey it's going on? No, uh, I think it needs major, major reform. And you, you'll probably hear this as well coming from politicians. Come election time, we must reform the NHS. And actually, they haven't given any concrete ideas about how to reform it. And the only thing that you generally see is a promise to throw more money at it. So as you'd expect, For Britain has a rather different approach. Uh, we keep the NHS definitely, and, and if you're worried about that, for the political aspect of it, uh, I think the majority in this country, we're asked, I think the majority would want to keep the NHS. Uh, and as a side note, I actually think that the NHS, or lack of support for the NHS, was one of the reasons that UKIP was never going to succeed in Labour areas. That's just an opinion. Anyway, uh, let's get on with reading the manifesto on the NHS. So, For Britain supports the National Health Service and the principles on which it was built. We believe that healthcare should be available to all British citizens and those legitimately entitled. Now, those legitimately entitled, as you might be able to guess, does not mean someone from the other side of the world who's never before visited Britain and paid penny in tax. So I'll get on to that in more detail in a second. For Britain is aware that prior to the introduction of the National Health Service, the poorest in society could expect ill health, lower employment prospects and crippling worry about the prospect of illness. And we will prevent an attempt at return to this society. Uh, I don't want us to be a heartless society. I think that people who are disabled or ill... Uh, not only should be cared for, but should be cared for better than they are today. For Britain acknowledges the vast numbers of NHS staff who work tirelessly to provide this service. And we acknowledge the high standard of care delivered by the NHS and the numerous lives it saves and enhances each and every year. Now, I have to say, I've used the NHS uh, several times and I have had great service. Um, a GP I went to a couple of years back, I was a little bit shocked at how busy it was. Um, and I was a little bit shocked at the, at the uh, I guess, the, 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 the doctors and, and the sort of lack of personal care. It was almost like a, a conveyor belt. Uh, so they've become really, really busy. 
But, you know, I I went to A&E when I hurt my foot once. Fantastic service. So I really, you know, one can't complain all the time about the NHS, but it's certainly, certainly the standard is certainly going down because there are too many people using it and not enough people staffing it. And it has got staffing problems with nurses and doctors. However, government spending on the NHS continues to rise with Prime Minister Boris Johnson promising an extra 1.8 billion in 2019. Waste is a common area of criticism in the NHS and one report in 2017 revealed that the NHS wastes around 7.6 billion per year on quote-unquote management consultants and the procurement of overpriced goods. Now, you won't, you know, the politicians who will throw extra money at the NHS are not talking about where that money's going. And there doesn't seem to be any conditions placed upon the money or any accountability for the money. And we know, you know, why is the health service spending almost £8 billion a year on management consultants? Why is the management paying to consult people to tell them how to manage? And that's 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 what's happening at, at a cost of eight, almost eight billion. This is not small change. Uh, the procurement of overpriced goods will would shock you. I mean, we have examples of, of hospitals paying uh, one pound or, or over a pound for something that's actually available for 15, 16 p. You know, these uh, that's not a definite example, but that's the kind of, of margins we're looking at in what hospitals are overpaying. Uh, there's got to be a look at also at drugs themselves. So spending in the NHS, both on external consultancy services and goods has got to be looked at. And I don't mean talked about and let's have a meeting to talk about it and then go on and carry on as usual. Something must be done. We need to send people in there who will sort this out. The NHS also spends an estimated £2 billion, again, we're not talking small change here, on so-called health tourism. And that is people coming to the UK solely to utilise the healthcare system. Uh, I, As I said, I worked in the NHS and this happens. This happens quite a bit. And also what you'll find are people who are diagnosed with a specific illness, uh, quite a serious illness. Um, in my case, HIV, because that's the area uh, that I worked in. Um, people will be diagnosed, you know, people in South America, for example, diagnosed on Tuesday and move to the UK on Wednesday. Uh, we know we know this what this is, and it's not about being heartless. It's about reality. It's about knowing that we cannot ask the old, already overburdened British taxpayer to pay for the whole world. It's simply not doable. For Britain is aware that privatisation has soared in the NHS in recent years. In 2017, one report claimed that as many as 70% of clinical contracts in England had been won by private companies, with major firms like Virgin winning contracts worth one billion. Uh, now, here's where the free market versus state provision uh, uh, argument and element comes in. And I don't actually like the idea of massive private companies coming into the NHS because the fact of the matter is that the service hasn't gotten any better. Uh, in fact, in my mind, it's still deteriorating. So what we're doing is paying out money to major companies, very, very wealthy companies, to provide services in the NHS at costing an absolute fortune and the services are not getting any better and yet there is public money going into already very very wealthy private pockets. I am not 100% happy about that and I can bet that a lot of the tax paying public are not happy about that either. In addition, serious questions have been raised about links between members of parliament and major drug companies and whether politicians may be profiting from the private sale of NHS assets. In 2014, a report revealed links and connections between politicians and healthcare giants. Unite the Union claimed that 24 MPs and peers who backed health reforms that allowed further private privatisation of the NHS were linked to private healthcare companies. Now, what does that all that mean? That means that politicians who will personally profit on the sale of an NHS asset to a private company or the contract, the uh, outsourcing of an NHS service 
are contracted to a major company is voted on by people who will financially profit from that very transaction. I don't like that. That stinks. I don't think members of Parliament should be making money out of the decisions they make about our public services. You may think differently. I doubt many of you will. Finally, it is widely believed that the NHS is too top-heavy with regard to non-medical management and admin, while nurses and doctors are underpaid and overworked. In 2018, it was reported that 33,000 nurses leave the health service every year, while nursing levels are still putting lives at risk in 2019. Now, I've made a video about this before, and I will link to it below, about policy on the staffing of the NHS. The Tory answer is easier immigration for NHS staff. Uh, my response to that would be, why don't we try training the thousands upon thousands of young Britons every year who can't get either nurse or doctor training places in the health service? Why don't we start training them instead of opening the borders? It's, it's wrong and crazy to be allowing mass migration to staff the NHS while British people are trying to work in it and not able to, not being given the training. So if we are going to pour all this money into the health service, I suggest we put it into training instead uh, of opening the borders. So here's the list. For Britain will audit the NHS. The British public deserves to know where NHS money is being spent and who is profiting from it. Now, if auditing the NHS sounds expensive, I bet quite a few quid that we'd actually end up saving significant billions if we actually found out where the money is going and, uh, well, shall we say, prioritised it rather better. End the privatisation of the NHS and introduce reversals where possible. Uh, and I think I've, I've, you know, even for the free market versus state provision uh, argument, I think the answer uh, to that I've already uh, given. I'm not, I don't think public money should be going into private pockets to provide a service that is could actually be even better provided by the state. There's no difference that we can see. Subject hospital chief executives to public scrutiny via a public sector accountability act now I'll give it that get on to that in more detail when i cover government which i'll do uh, early next week incentivize nhs senior management to target waste and health tourism and that's pretty easy to do all visitors and migrants entering britain will have valid health insurance you have to have it when you go to other countries you have to have it here too Ensure that only those who have lived and worked in the UK for a minimum of five years are entitled to NHS care. And that's who, uh, who I referred to at the beginning when I said legitimately entitled. Bar members of Parliament from profiting from NHS contracts. Just that sentence alone, I think most of you will agree with. Ensure that a sufficient proportion of NHS funding is directed at the provision of those suffering from mental health conditions. Now, we have a mental health crisis in this country uh, and we can talk endlessly about the causes for it, uh, which are important, of course, I think. Uh, I think there are many causes for it. I think uh, lack of empowerment in society. I think a lack of trust in leadership. I think confusion. Uh, I think uh, uh, a lack of security uh, in, ter in, in, in the family and economic security. Uh, I think our, our society has lost a lot of its community. And I don't think that. I think that's pretty clear to most people. Our community spirit uh, has, has vanished. And also, I actually think we're very stressed these days from this uh, ex sudden explosion. In my lifetime, we've gone from having a phone in the hallway with a dial on it uh, to being able to broadcast from our pockets to the whole world uh, and having information on hand, a lot of it false information. Uh, I think we're, we're, we're crowded by information in, in, and it happened very, very quickly. And I think it's very stressful. Scrap car parking charges. It, it's, it's shocking to think, isn't it? When you think of all the money that's wasted in the NHS, someone wants to visit their old gran in hospital and has to pay. I mean, again, we're not talking about a couple of quid. You know, this is, this is appalling. Absolutely appalling. 
penalise patients who fail to attend outpatient appointments without valid excuse. And as someone who again, who has worked in the NHS, who saw this a lot, uh, people just don't bother. And this is one of the downsides in offering something that is free at the point of use. And I understand that people will take advantage uh, and they will abuse it. And we have highly paid consultants who should be highly paid. Uh, that's not uh, an issue. Highly paid uh, medical consultants uh, whose appointments are valuable and people just take them for granted uh, and make appointments and just don't bother turning up. And they can do this uh, repeatedly and this is a great waste of time and resource and of course a waste of an appointment for someone else who might really need it there's got to be uh, a penalty and it's got to be a financial penalty uh, and yes I know that's taking uh, money from someone who's probably already on benefits but look uh, what do we do what do you do? You've got you've got to penalise in some way. You've got to throw, draw people's attention to this. They cannot abuse the health service in this way. And sometimes you need a stick uh, as well as a carrot. So that's it. I mean, these are common sense. Again, I say it all the time. Before I say it all the time for a reason. Common sense policies that will sort things out, will change things in the health service. At the moment, the two major parties, all they're promising is to throw more money at it. But when money is going down the drain, they're just pouring more of your money down the drain. The NHS stays, yes, but it must be run better. We can't just talk about that. We have to do it or we lose the NHS altogether. Common sense, for Britain has it, we'll apply it to the NHS and we'll save it.